Hello and welcome to Rocket Fuel, your daily update for everything that's happening in the Rocket Pool community. So today is October 24th, that's right, um, and I have a whole update update from the whole of the weekend for you. I'm Wack Wack Attack, so let's get started. So the first thing that happened was over the weekend we hit 9,000 mini pools, which is really wonderful. So that's 9,000 validators in Ethereum speak, and um, that means we have just over 2% of the whole of the Ethereum staking environment is now staking through Rocket Pool, which is really, really great considering that, you know, the Beacon Chain had a 10, 11 month head start on Rocket Pool. So we've done really well. Um, it's time to get that number up to 20, well, higher than 2%. So that's really exciting. And Joe shared that screenshot. I think other people shared that information as well. So, um, yeah, thanks, thanks for the people who shared the information. Next, we had something really great happen over the weekend, which is that we got a 42 ETH block into the smoothing pool. I'm sorry if you are on um, watching this on video. Um, I'll just, yeah. So the 42 ETH block came through and um, the mini pool, the smoothing pool now has a really great amount of ETH in there. I think it's over 190 ETH. And we've still got another couple of days left for the for the period to finish so let's have a look at the block it's loaded here so we can see that it was someone using um rocket pool obviously they're using flash bots builder the base fees was 0.16 eth the priority fee was 0.02 eth and the extra mev profit was 42.59 eth so the total reward was 42.6 eth so that was really great that that came into the smoothing pool. The node operator who runs this node has um, 71 mini pools in the smoothing pool. They're the second biggest node operator in the smoothing pool. So it's really great that, they, that they've been able to, you know, uh, give this much ETH to the smoothing pool. If we have a quick look at the smoothing pool itself, um, we can see that there's 195 ETH in there, 194.999. And... Um, there's 4,155 4, mini pools, which is just under half of all mini pools are now in the smoothing pool as well. And we have 71.3% of the nodes in there. So it's definitely like a lot of the small fish are in there, which is really wonderful to see. And um, we're getting a really good reward this month. I think it works out to be somewhere like 0 0.05 ETH per mini pool, but don't hold me on that amount. Um, hopefully it'll, it'll be a nice one. So congratulations to everyone next we have these two proposals that have uh, are live now on the vote.rocketpool.net site if you have a look the first one is the pdao treasurer selection which is um being voted on this between two people which is uh vaca and uh, zeman forever so if you um go and have a look at their statements and stuff vaca you know is a very active member of the community he's made bots that i use every day for the community which is really wonderful and also um zeman is a new member of the community but um he's very experienced like he is uh, an accountant by by day job so um that is really cool to see but um it seems like just because vaca has been a part of the community for so long that um he's going to win out on that vote most likely. So almost everyone has voted for Vaka, which kind of makes sense because we all we all know him, right? So that's cool. And then um, this next vote is a little bit more interesting. So it's the GMC membership selection for RPIT 15. So, you know, I've talked about the people who have nominated themselves. I've obviously nominated myself and um, the current results are in over here. So with... Uh, being just less than halfway to quorum, um, we have Joe at number one with 268 votes. We have me at number two with 257 votes. We have Wanda, 213 votes. Ken, 210 votes. Mentor, 210 votes pretty much. Invis, 150 votes. Kaloduran, 137 votes. And then um, the rest of the pack is kind of like uh, trailing the field a little bit. There's Fornax, Object, Object. Ramana, uh, Kevster, Dandachaka, uh, and uh, Encryptics, and Jot, who are kind of like trailing in the pack. But um, it looks like the like the top people there, I guess, um, 
up to wait one two three four five six seven you have to call Col run that's like pretty they everyone's kind of got a lead there fornax might be able to sneak in object i'm not sure if we'll be able to speak sneaking or not but anything can change with you know a, a whale voting one way or another but um i just want to take this moment to like thank people for voting for me which is really like i really appreciate it marceau gave me um 20 percent of his vote uh dres gave me 100 percent of his vote and a bunch of other people like uh, gave me votes as well like even um kev um uh ken <laughs> didn't vote for himself but he voted for me for some of the votes so i really appreciate that ken um i kind of voted for myself <laughs> so i gave 100 percent of my vote to myself so yeah but um and then like you know the 69 lol 69 eth gave me 50 percent of their vote like people have been really kind to me like really really kind so everyone who has voted for me i really would like to thank you for that i think you know i'm gonna put a lot of time and effort into making my position on the gmc um as good as possible like the work that i do as good as possible and i make it as helpful as possible to people so thank you for everyone who has voted for me um please carry on voting we've still got um another few days five days six days of voting left however quorum should be reached with another um 2700 votes 2800 votes so if you haven't voted yet come on in and vote and um I'm not saying vote for me of course like vote for whoever you think would do the best job in that committee so um thank you for everyone who has voted next we had this correction kind of or clarification and explanation from a thing that i talked about on friday's rocket fuel so on friday's rocket fuel i talked about how um, it might be worth it for people who have mini pools right now not to change the existing mini pools into leb 8s until after withdrawals are enabled on the ethereum chain and the reason why i explained is like you know if you get rewards on top then those have to be uh, those you might be lost so Nosho came in and he um, gave an explanation of that which i really appreciate because Nosho is fantastic so he says good stuff um in the leb segment i noticed that i kind of let you hanging there with an exact explanation for why the beacon chain or skimming matters so just for your information future reference say you have a mini pool with 15 percent commission then 57.5 percent of beacon chain rewards belong to you after you upgrade to leb 8s that value changes to 35.5 percent because you now provide less of the eth the simplified interpretation simply changes the 57.5 percent to 35.5 percent and doesn't worry about already existing beacon chain rewards that's fine with skimming because there won't be any existing rewards but say you have one eth accrued value on the beacon chain and you upgrade before skimming then you would lose 0 0.575 minus 0 0.355 equals 0 0.22 eth of your rewards so there's a that's a big chunk of rewards that you might lose if you like and those are hypothetical numbers it might be even more for some people um that you lose those rewards if you switch before um withdrawals become live or skimming becomes live so that's definitely something to keep in mind um however once lebs go live which will hopefully be before withdrawals go live on the live on the ethereum chain once uh, lebs go live you can spin up new lebs without impacting your rewards on your existing mini pools so that's definitely something to keep in mind um so thank you so much for that noshua and um ken as well says excellent um illustration and answer so thank you so much next we have this thing from pateris who's saying did you know that Euler has feelless feelless flash loans and then there's some links to um getting a flash loan for our eth and getting a flash loan for rpl and how much there's available to borrow and how much you can do and <laughs> in this is i'm going to exploit all the con all contracts in existence with those 0 0.0017 rpl uh so uh peteris uh, deposited 10 rpl into there and he says you is permissionless you can lend borrow any token that's on uniswap v3 so it seems like there's some limitation exactly to how it works um and um peteris shared this information he says how come i can't borrow with an isolated asset note that isolated and cross assets cannot be used as collateral and then Peter, peteris says hmm what's the point then and maybe it means someone can deposit die uh, wrapped eth etc and borrow my 10 rpl so um later on this was the discussion as well maso came in and said well we're borrowing lending on eula for rpl and our eth 
hmm, I guess it's permissionless. And then um, there were more points being made. Let me see if I can find them about how there's three tiers. Um, yeah, zero X Zix says is Yulia a trustworthy platform, and then we used it. And then uh, Tuxcat says Banklist did an episode recently on October eighth about Eula. And um, yeah, here we had a uh, Bago girl saying Eula is permissionless, and you could borrow, lend up PL and R ETH on it. But they have different tiers. So there's isolated, cross, and collateral. So I R P L and R ETH are on the isolated tier at the moment. So this kind of limited on what you can do with those two assets. However, um, Maso came in and then was saying. Yeah, he says, we have an active chat with the Eula team. We can push it to get it enabled for collateral borrowing and cross collateral next. And then people said, nice. So that's definitely something to keep an eye out for and see how it goes. Um, I think um, it might lead to some good stuff uh, if we can get onto the collateral level instead of being the isolated level. And um, next we have another comment from Maso. And it didn't catch uh, much traction, so there wasn't much to add to it. But the comment itself is really exciting because it kind of brings to attention all the great stuff that's coming in Atlas, or some of the great stuff that's coming in Atlas. So he says, do we have any kind of summary of expected Atlas stuff? As far as I know, it's LEBs with the new credit system, um, support for solo staker migration, support for withdrawals, obviously, and Kane, Kane's no deposit um, gas savings. Anything else? And as far as I could tell, nobody really came in and like added anything to that list. Um, yeah, v sorry, Valdorf says, nope. If someone wants to update that RPIP, they're welcome to. If not, I'll get to it eventually. As of now, the latest shows SAS, etc. So SAS has obviously been like uh, pushed back in favor of getting LEBs done in time. So even with these things, that's some really big changes that are happening across the whole board for um, Rocket Pool. So LEBs obviously will mean that you can... Um, stake with less ETH so instead of having 16 ETH to stake you'll be able to stake with 4 ETH and get 24 ETH from the port protocol support for solar staker conversion which will mean if you are an existing um, staker on the Ethereum network once withdrawals go live then you'll be able to like do like some fancy um, stuff on your node and n become a rocket pool operator and then support for withdrawals obviously means that you can withdraw, uh, can't, like turn off your node, get your uh, money that you're staking, get it out of there, which is really great. And node, uh, Kane's node deposit gas savings is a code optimization for uh, setting up mini pools that will save about 40% in gas, which is really cool. So yeah, that's all really exciting stuff. Next, we had this comment from ndlz.eth who says, to make it you need let me introduce, and then there's the website is let me actually open the tweet so we can have a look together um this is to make it easier let me introduce go rocket today a simple website to swap your centralized steth to decentralized reth from rocket pool and spreads the word to your friends so what are you waiting for anon go rocket today so there's a website that they spun up which is kind of a front end um for um switching between different um lsd providers so you know you sell um, oh, let me just decline this. You sell um, STETH, you buy RETH. And then some people had this question about the number over here because obviously you get giving one STETH, you're getting um, 0 0.95544 RETH in return. Why are you getting less RETH? Obviously, RETH is, um, is a non rebasing token, so it accrues in value over time compared to ETH. STETH is a rebasing token, so it always maintains one to one pegging for. Um, ETH, so that's where that value comes from. So basically, the website is really simple, but I think uh, NDLZ is like working w on some um, optimizations and some like uh, tweaks to make it like a bit better. But um, it's really cool that this kind of thing is uh, like people in the community are kind of taking this on themselves and uh, making it easier for people to get into the Rocket Pool community, into the Rocket Pool ecosystem, and, and staking with Rocket Pool. So thank you for that. Um, Next, we had this comment from uh, Freddy the Philosopher, and it came through on the 21st, but I missed it at the time. So it says, the Badger Arith gauge vote just got enough for a quorum and is voting heavily in favor so far. So current results, let's do this, let, no, let's not do this. And then there was like, that that vote was going to pass, basically. And Freddy goes on to say, Badger controls a substantial amount of the vote in balancer. Our council is starting discussions on voting and bribing with assumption this word 
this gauge gets approved. I recall something about Rocket Pool matching partner incentives. Is that still on the table? And Maso says there's probably some caveats having to do with partner and the other half of the incentive pair, but generally, yes. Ultimately, it's up to our incentive committee, but I'll say that we're eager to explore more of this. So, Badger, um, we're coming in with some new pairs. So, uh, go back and have a look. It says, um, Broad DeFi presence gets attention to anybody that's interested in yield. The other side is the liquidity providing, uh, liquidity providings, marketing to the community on the other side. The Badger gauge request above is a great example. There are members of both our communities and with Badger uh, who are fam not familiar with the other DAO. Rocket Pool gained exposure in the community simply by having the gauge requested. Then it becomes the social network, friends of friends, etc. Our first real exposure, the depth of understanding of Rocket Pool came from Marceau. Did a podcast he did with uh, Bankless. Great stuff. More of that will go a long ways. Uh, that led to my outreach and subsequently this gauge request. It's all connected. So it's really great that, you know, the our community is working so well and getting the word about Rocket Pool out there and getting um, people aware of what we're doing. And because of that, we're getting all these great integrations. So um, Badger will be pr setting up um, liquidity pools where they, uh, I think, have the Badger token and our ETH. And it just makes sense for people who are providing liquidity on uh, Badger ETH or Wrapped ETH to change that to our ETH because they'll be able to get rewards in their idle ETH. So staking rewards in the idle ETH. So that's really great that you know we're getting all these um, integrations are still happening and they're still going full steam ahead, even though it's a bear market. Like it's really great to see all that. <sighs> Next, we had this comment from Fornax who. Um, it's quite long, so maybe I won't read all of it, but um, it says, Hey guys, I had quite a few drinks, so it's time to solve the world's problems. Let me know what you think about these steps to replace, expand the ODAO voting. So Fornax basically suggested um, some steps in order to um, take away some powers from the ODAO and actually give more powers to node operators to be able to um, push information to the chain. Um, and this could be node, node operators using their stake as insurance, but could also be other users staking RPL, for instance, and then they get that information. So that was um, that was some information going out, which was really cool to see. But um, the, Valdorf and like others kind of had some questions about it and like kind of wanted some more information about how it worked. So Valdorf said, so this is better than ODAO that blindly runs smart node, but far worse than ODAO that does their job and publishes the results they educatedly believe in. I'd much rather work on increasing ODAO size with folks that will review smart node code and or develop an independent account. Um, and then Fornax says the idea is to make everyone part of the ODAO in a cheap way. How is it far worse? And Valdo says everyone isn't qualified. And Fornax says everyone who wants to. And uh, Valdov says, um, if we're just running Joe's code, we can cut out the middleman. Joe can publish directly. ODAO members should be reviewing code. They must have the technical ability and time to do so. Better yet, they should make their own parallel code to serve as a sanity check. So that's an interesting discussion. And obviously the the existence of the ODAO, the way the ODAO works, its powers, the amount that we pay the ODAO, all of these are really like um, active issues in the community. And people are discussing these like quite frequently. So um, the fact that Fornox is taking time out to try to think about um, solutions to um, fixing it, to review some of their powers, I think that's really commendable. I think it's a discussion that's gonna carry on going because I don't think, um, you know, his post got too much other uh, feedback, but maybe um, people like Noshua or someone from the team or other people can chime in and let us know what they think as well. I think that that would be really great. But thank you for Fornax for sharing that um, and doing the work. And finally, I'm going to end on something that I really like. That's not quite Rocket Pool related, but it's Ethereum related. Um, I shared this post a, a couple of days ago. I said, I can't get over this burn. And it just gone below 2000 ETH inflation since the merge, um, which was really great. And then um, Invis shared this post. He said, um, yes, I have abandoned Ethereum despite supporting it in the past. And this is Suzu speaking, who was on Three Arrows Capital before I went bust. And he said, yes, Ethereum has abandoned its users despite supporting them in the past. The idea of sitting around and jerking off, watching the burn and concocting purity tests while zero newcomers can afford the chain is gross. So <laughs> it's really fitting that, uh, that that tweet from Suzu, which was from November 21st last year, so 11 months ago, um, 
is now <laughs> kind of like all of us are sat here watching uh, ultrasound money um ultrasound.money which is a wonderful website like i really really love that website but um you can sit around watching the burn all day and you know the the tweaks they've made recently to how they display the information just means that you can literally sit around and just watch those charts tick by every 12 seconds and more and more ETH getting burned we should probably with the way everything is going is the ETH will be ultrasound as of the moment of the merge uh, probably tomorrow maybe towards the end of the day tomorrow so i might cover it again on wednesday's episode but um that's something that i find really exciting and and fun to watch so if you do want to have a look it's ultrasound.money but um i'm going to end today's episode on that note i hope you all have a great start to your week and i will see you all tomorrow bye